The last thing I wanted to bring up was uh, something that all of us are grappling with right now. Talking to someone uh, who doesn't agree with you, wanting to uh, change their perception, maybe convince them. And it feels like we're in a place in our country where someone's with you or they're not. Someone's in your group or they're in the other group. And I'm just saying this as a, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to address everybody with this. Yeah. If you're a rabid Trump supporter uh, or if you think he's the antichrist, mm -hmm. how can we get to a place where we can talk about these things? You can't shout someone down and yell at them and intimidate them into agreeing with you uh, about some of these issues. So what do you do? Yeah, it's the uh, it's the <laughs> it's the age old question. Um, I think you make you make strategic smart choices that conserve your energy and protect your humanity, <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and and also are good uses of your energy, right? Um, and so I think that sometimes um, I will say that I've never ever ever seen an argument be won in a Facebook thread. <laughs> No, have you ever seen that happen? No. I've never seen online anyone go, you know what, I've been thinking about it mm -hmm. and you're right, UFOs don't exist. <laughs> <laughs> so I think there can be, when you really believe something and you're seeing not stuff online, it's very tempting to get into it. I, at this point in my world, I don't do that. Your hair looks great, right. by the way. It's incredible. Um, you know, I think that should be the most important thing everyone takes away from this conversation. It is, it is. It Conan's is. hair and then race relations in America. I have my priorities straight. Yeah, you know, maybe you could like, we could like spray paint Black Lives Matter onto your hair, then it could just be always there, right? Okay, all right, we can do that. We can um, sort of an orange. Sometimes I found for people who have family members, um, especially maybe older generation family members who they're they want to be able to connect with over this, but it's hard. Sometimes connecting through history, um, through like historical events can be a kind of way in um, to get to those conversations. And I also think that we have to accept that we're just not going to change everybody's mind. Um, and I don't think, I don't, there's people who disagree with me. I do not think that you, that we are under, an, that we are obligated to get into long drawn out conversations with people who don't respect the basic humanity of, the people that we love, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and that said, I think that if you do see someone online who, you know, and you, you want to engage with them or, or it's a family member, asking people if they're willing to talk to you offline, you know, hey, I have a different opinion and I'd be really interested in sharing about like what I believe. Would you ever be willing to talk to me, you know, privately or on the phone, you know? Um, right. uh, and, and if you can come, I mean, I think that for people who are interested in having those conversations, learning the basics of nonviolent communication is incredibly helpful because I agree with you. You're not gonna shout people down, you know, and oh. it can go from zero to like 10 million so quickly because people yes. get so upset. Especially right, especially right now. I mean, yeah. it's always been that way, but right now it feels definitely like a powder keg and we're seeing every day, we talked about this before on social media, people have even taken wearing masks, face masks as a basic protection, they've, somehow made that an issue that they've tied to, uh, you know, um, race or uh, uh, income, wealth. They've tied it to all this other stuff, freedom, uh, government versus no government. And it's just like, no, no, just put on a mask. It's really simple. Just put on a mask. But no, that's what we've, we've, if, if, if people are losing it over wearing a piece of paper over their mouth for the 10 minutes that they're at a Costco, yeah. we see what's going to happen when you're implying that they're part of a racist system that needs to be, uh, that needs to be fixed. They're going to really lose it. That's where you choose your battles, right? That's where you choose, is this going to be worth the energy that it's going to take me? And could I use my energy elsewhere? I'll tell you that, you know, a lot of people that I talk to who have struggled with really racist family members, you, the aunt and uncle, grandma, grandpa, the parents, they may be far gone, but those nieces and nephews, those little cousins, you know? Right. 
send them my books, <laughs> yeah. you know, have those conversations. Like you said about your kids, like they're a different generation. So sometimes I think maybe it's, if you're the aunt connecting with that niece or nephew, um, in a way that doesn't like, you know, yeah. your parents, but, uh, <laughs> I don't talk to any of my relatives. That's how I take care of it. That's all. My manager talks to everyone for me. You know, he, says, he tells me they're lovely people. <laughs> the, the other thing I'd say is, Sometimes I think about talking to people who don't get it or who you disagree with. You know, it's almost like talking to my almost seven-year-old son where I have to remind myself that we're gonna have a lot of conversations where what I say in the moment may not seem to change anything with him, but it's gonna sink in over time. Right. And I think that it's still worth doing your best to share resources, recommend books, recommend documentaries, maybe the back and forth on Facebook isn't gonna change anything. But like, maybe you can get that aunt to listen to the 1619 podcast, you know, or yep. to watch When They See Us, or to watch 13th, you know? Maybe just putting those resources out there, um, maybe that can work with someone over time and they might not change their mind in the moment that you're in the conversation, oh. but some stuff could sink in. That's how I feel about parenting basically at all times. <laughs> right, well, uh, I appreciate this conversation a lot. I like to be an optimist and I I, uh, I like to know that good people are out there trying to do good work. And so okay. I'm- uh, uh, Wait, I have one more question. I know we're, we're done, but uh, I am curious to know, like what is one thing that you learned from my book that you were like fascinated to learn as a history buff that you didn't know before? Well, I, 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 I'm, I'm gonna say Maya Lin. What I didn't know was that Maya Lin was in college when she designed the Vietnam Memorial and that she got that much opposition to it and that she fought back. What college student who was told, yes, we're going to build your monument, we just need you to make a few changes says, I don't think so, it's good yeah. the way it is. And then it turned out to be such a stunning success. That's one of the coolest, uh, I mean, the book's, the book's filled with very amazing stories. That was the one that stuck with me because I was so shocked that someone that young um, it just had the guts and temerity and vision and then saw it all the way through. And then it turned into a massive success in her lifetime, immediately. Yeah. Yeah. Not, like Van, not like Van Gogh, like where, okay, maybe he's a ghost somewhere and he's appreciating and his stuff is making a lot of money. He's a one-eared ghost, but uh, yeah, I, I really love that. Excellent, Van Ghost. Van Ghost, exactly. All right, I'll, I'll do the comedy here. Let's see. <laughs>